Yes. We can start, I think. Yeah. I think আমি topics but uh, they are not uh, not identical or individual item but they all are interlinked like that start formation is actually for what the human sequence starts human sequence start as a different kind of uh, formation of the doma starts with round drops so what we can learn from the abhins uh, observation perspective that will be the main motivation of my today's talk So I'll maybe start with that. Uh, 
you can stop me anytime if you have some understanding any problems because he means uh, some of them yeah yes okay so basically i'll start with that this is our uh, visible universe as we know that it's the billions of galaxy and billions of stars is there and if you among that uh, this all these galaxy we have that some milky way um, systems where that solar our solar system system is there while we are uh, um, uh, earth is here so where we are talking so this is the milky way galaxy and the milky way also harbors um, billions of stars whatever we catalog again today billions of billion stars so already maybe more than that uh, we have catalog uh, with the technology and sun is the one basically very ordinary star is a spectral type means g2 is the g2 means it's a, it is a surface temperature about the 6000 kelvin and we have a many exotic stars and the many faint stars in our galaxy uh, so that will be the very interesting to understand their formation their atmosphere their planetary in um, association nature so all these important parameters uh, it's a very interesting to study and it's uh, this will actually insert formation of the solar system so basically if you look at our solar system we have that uh, sun and then all the eight uh, planets uh, so they are locating nicely located uh, uh, in the equatorial plane of the uh, solar systems and uh, if you look back uh, during 1992 the, when the first exoplanets discovered so it was the only unique system that uh, starts with having a eight kind of planets. So later period when the um, Kepler come into the picture, now that number, if you have see that we have a, um, more than 5,000 uh, confirmed planets. Also, we have a several candidate uh, planets also is there. And if we see that plot here, mass mass is the jupiter masses and the period is the days we have a variety of the, the rotation period about the other type of stars so these are different uh, methods in the uh, discovered one is the radial velocity very old techniques the later period transit uh, was the most successful when kepler launched and then directly imaging another um, which we are going to uh, get more information regarding uh, that uh, atmosphere of the planets and this is the some kind of uh, overview of the kepler satellites it has a 1.4 meter telescopes look at the certain area of the sky and huge ccd 95 megapixel ccd camera it's very huge in that time during 2009 it's works over the means exoplanet works the, about the six years data period it has some problems then it goes to the other science area so in during this time it has uh, discovered several important discovery that solar system is not unique we have a uh, ample of stars that has a means uh, not only uh, say like uh, our solar system also several rocky planets also discovered in this, through this journey. Okay. <clears throat> so this is basically transit method where it means is the challenging one kind of small deep. Deep is uh, seen through the uh, continuous monitoring of the start. And then if the transit means uh, we model it, then get the, all the parameter of the uh, planets. Of course, you have to understand the host stars also. And uh, next, uh, Kepler is there. So then our next question, uh, these are the all kinds of rocky planets all are there. Then next question naturally is the life. Is there any life exists in the other sky um, uh, uh, stars? They are orbiting around that. How we look at that? We have to look at the fingerprints of the life. How we do that? Then we can look some of the spectral features among the uh, um, planets. They are 
particularly rocky planets, if we look at that, we may get some kind of signature. But it's uh, thinking about the getting the such, such kind of spectra, it's not easy task. You see that you have a sun and uh, planet system. From outside, you are looking only planet. So it's a glare about the sun's light. So things are, things are was very challenging. You have to occult in the stars and get the uh, planets and take the spectra. Then also, of course, you have a tiny sum of the depth of the lines. You have to get it to like a oxygen, carbon dioxide, some kind of life signature. You have to get it. So life is challenging, still challenging. So that question in science is waiting for the answer, some kind of hints. Uh, so we are going on that. Then, then uh, uh, James Webb goes into the face. You know that it's uh, uh, several media, everything. So, so they are uh, behind of this uh, telescope. You might have uh, heard several things. But if you look at that, that there are several piggyback instruments. They are with, uh, things are working for such kind of uh, big game on the life of the other planets. For that, they are equipped. All the instruments are equipped for that with the 0.6 micron to 28 micron. Uh, they have the NIR camera, spectroscopy, mid-IR camera, mid space. And of course, interesting that they have that uh, pornography. Pornography usually they marks that uh, stars and take the planet spectra. And then aperture marking. Aperture marking means you can take the, uh, this is the JWST, uh, the size of the telescope, about the 6.5 meter. So it can means, uh, go to the means up to diffraction limit of the, this telescope. Aperture marking use that facility resort many kind of stars. And another interesting part of the DWST to see that here that there is a strong um, shielding is there, sun shielding. It's actually, it's a goes to the very deep space uh, into um, 150 million kilometers uh, from the Earth. So earlier, all the satellites basically they carry the cryonics. Like I mean, the first 1963, IRA satellites sent by the European Space Agency it was observed up to 12 to 100 micron. So 100 micron uh, regions, uh, you know that if you go to the see in this uh, in the hall that we have a full of radiation 10 micron because Earth itself gets emitted full of the 10 micron area. So your detector, every system has to pull down. So background has to suppress certain limit to get the signals from the other stars. So cryogenics is needed, but cryogenics problem is that it is it has a limited uh, time uh, thing. So that will be that's why I means uh, IRAS works for short time span. Speedjet also worked for short times. All the previous that all the cryogenic system was that. But here they actually passive cooling technology they use that. So environment itself, they are getting cooled environment. This telescope is located in the very cooled environment. We don't need any passive cooling system, um, it's cooling is cryonic system here. That's why beauty of the James Webb. And also James Webb has the all kinds of um, instrument, back end instrument. So it has a scan spectra, take spectra, NIR, multi of the spectra, then pornograph for the planet uh, detection, BD for the uh, planet detection. So it, it has a huge potential. So slowly we have started the journey. We can understand that. Yes. You are saying because of the sun shield, it's not getting warm. It's just at the space temperature, whatever. Yes, yes. So it's a cool to the, I think it's a, around the 40 Kelvin, it's a cool. Okay, so generally even speed jet worked up to the 8 micron and 24 micron speed jet telescope. Was, uh, speed and it was the temperature around the 5 Kelvin, but it is a little high than the uh, speed jet. So, but still it's a work up to the 30 micron. And Hashira was also cryogenically. Cryogenically full. 
so the all the, the that's why you must see what the uh, difficulty and this aperture masking you mean that part of the aperture is masked so that the two parts can be interfered and yes so it's a similar technique of the interferometry you have a means uh, you have a baseline maximum could be a diameter so you have a several means hole is the an aperture in the marks is aperture mask pool there so you have a different hole, then the interferometry means maximum um, is 6.5, you can get diffraction limit, uh, lambda by B, baseline. It's the orbit, L2, L2, L2. L2 orbit. L2 orbit. But then you are saying that just because of the shunt shield, the Sun shield always facing the sun, it has, yes. Remember that the telescope is 6.5 meter, but the sun shield is as big as the people. Yeah, it's a, not only that, it has a, it's a seven layers. It's a very strong layer, one, two, three, four, five, six layers. So it, it cannot heat that uh, telescope itself. Heating is the, another element, so you have to be considered. Coverage, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not need the again, again, sun is needed for the, means the data linking and other things. So, so all the power actually generated from the solar power. So, sun also needed here. Sun also, sun also sealed also. Yes, seal the detector. Yes, this is the technology, but but we have to wait for the, the all the breakthrough, whatever we dream about the life existence. So this is actually basically is, uh, in our galaxy and come back here. So this is the spiral arm in our Milky Way. And you know that uh, all the star forming regions where the young star is forming. Even if you have some statistics every day with uh, some uh, formations, uh, is, uh, going on something. So basically with the spider alarm basically give the opportunity to formation of the stars because it's a huge uh, dust and gas is concentrated there. And uh, you have to maintain certain criteria to formation of the stars that you already learned that genes mass. So I'll come to the genes mass equation. What is that tells about the genes mass? So we have that all star forming regions, uh, they are forming in the either Orion arm, Parsias arm, other uh, several arms, Sagittarius arm, so all kinds of um, it's, uh, star formation regions. So some of them things are, we are just uh, uh, given example, we have already worked some of the regions, so we mark it here. So basically, if you start that star formation process, actually you have a dust and gas, then it's uh, once that genes mass condition, genes mass in this uh, related actually temperature and density. So typically temperature of this cloud is a very uh, molecular hydrogen cloud because 99% is the made of the um, hydrogen and rest of the so helium and other heavier elements in the ISM. So basically, this molecular cloud, once they uh, meet the genes mass, temperature and density, then uh, molecular cloud start to formation. Typically, that mass is a few thousand solar mass. So it has a cloud has to bear. So slowly uh, collapse and uh, eventually they come to the means, uh, regions where that uh, individual cloud is the uh, as a means form as it starts with a big uh, surrounding them. So this is some of our interesting means uh, area what we can learn from this uh, kind of big and starts. We are termed as a pre-mensic okay, and starts. These starts. So now question is that how you classify them pre-mensic and starts. There are several evolutionary process in this process. Once we uh, uh, call it class zero, class one, uh, means class two, class three, there are several things are there. So how you distinguish that? 
because it's a uh, evolved process once the star is uh, collapsed it has a huge uh, ditch outside that you have a means uh, minimum light is coming out uh, from the main star so basically you are seeing the only ditch from the class zero state it's a huge ditch is uh, all the light is absorbed by the surrounding medium so then once class one they comes so basically they uh, emit in the um, so if you handed micron and beyond radio and some millimeter radian. If you talk about the class one, they basically have something uh, black body like a spectra here, plus excess emission here. But it has uh, starting emitting from the maybe one micron to uh, longer handed micron region. So class two sources. Class uh, three sources basically so they are. Uh, already cleared the dicks and they are emitting from the uh, UVT all along that um, um, uh, handed micron regions. So this is the some kind of classification if I talk as a in class zero source, class one source, class two source, it has typically um, uh, decide what is the evolutionary class of the female sequence scale. Now, question is that uh, how you uh, understand these are the female sequence star and these are the class one star, these are the class two star. So then you have to use some techniques to identify them. So these are the actually basically means a uh, real picture of the means observing ACD, means spectral energy distribution of this thing. And you see there is a pure kind of black body is there and I have up sudden uh, with the it as a, it is not following that black body, it's the uh, excess emission uh, with the black body. So black body spectra, if I talk about it, it's uh, like it will be, depends on the temperature, black body, you know that it's the uh, emission is the depends purely on the temperature of the body. And it has, it has a, it's a uh, shift is the, this uh, shift is there in the different, uh, as per temperature, if it goes to the hotter to data starts, you have that uh, uh, peak uh, temperature is the wine law, whatever you know that uh, lambda max t equal to constant, so accordingly it's in shift. So basically, understanding this black body actually you are taking the, some information of the class in the certain uh, portion of the uh, region. Integrating flux, we call that magnitude of the systems, magnitude. If you flux integrate in certain wavelength, you are getting magnitude of the system. So now it's uh, we are coming to the observation facts. We are taking the sampling black body with a certain uh, range of the wavelength and we have the different kind of different magnitude. Okay. So these are the things actually, basically we identify is the, one of the tools uh, uh, is the color magnitude diagram. Color magnitude diagram tells about that what kind of start. These are the actually giant start. Some of the evolution track is there. This is extinction line. We have a started time. So which are the excess start? We are decoding with the thin start. And this is a um, excess class zero, class one sources. And these are the near infrared wavelength, but near infrared wavelength is not efficient to work such kind of thing. Then we go to the mid IR wavelength. Because as you see that earlier the graph, so all the ACD actually pick up in the dusty regions, that means it's the mid IR wavelength. So this is the one efficient way one can uh, do that classify that female second class one plus two source and, and all these uh, jungle regions is the field starts we don't have excess emission so we have single out from the all the field starts to the start from region things then another thing is proper motion if you have a belongs to a certain start from regions all the starts from together they have moved together so they have a certain proper motion one can identify uh, to the some bias. Um, I don't talk about the much on the system because it's a different subject area. So we can do that. And then another spectroscopy is the one of the best way, but it's a uh, time consuming. We have to miss thousand starts. If you take a spectra, it's not possible. So you have to rely on the only photometry system, particularly media wavelength.
Yeah. Yeah. First plot. First plot actually has yes. That is the actually this is the H minus K J minus H. H uh, is the near infrared wavelength is a filter band actually. So this filter band uh, near infrared uh, detector has a specific range of working range. Generally work from the 1.1 to 2.5 micron. So you, we use astronomical filters like JHK. J has a central wavelength uh, about the 1.25 micron. It has a bandwidth about the 0.3 micron. So H has a uh, filter has a uh, central wavelength 1.6 mic 65 micron has also similar kind of bandwidth. A 2.2 micron. If you see that ACD, previous ACD, so you see that is that which um, is sticking somewhere in one micron region. So if you go to micron region, you have to expect some excess in this thing. So this criteria actually black body, you are sampling uh, ACD certain wavelength range. So there is a uh, slope here. If you take the, there is a black body slope, and it's a deviate from the black body, if you have a slope like that. So this character actually used for identification of the pre-mensipan stars. And very useful is uh, done in the 3.6, 4.5, K and 3.6. Similarly, you can use that 8 micron region. So different, yes. Yeah. So I think, uh, you mentioned that the color magnitude. Color magnitude, that's right. Yes. Similar way. Yeah, it's a there, but it's not visible actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. From there, we have we have a Yes. Giants, uh, men sequence, all these, so we can. Uh, yeah. Here in the ACD, if lines are, uh, if, if it was only a star, it will just be a black body spectrum. But yes. since yes. there are other dust and material, so you have infrared emission. Infrared emission. So it's a pure black body. Yes. It is not the, it's like a dark body. Yes. Or, yes. But it has a dust and gas, that's why it uh, have sense. Emission. Emission. emission from the so longer wave. So that is the, the pro we can probe to identify is the female sequence stars. This is the best way to probe them. And these are color, color, right? The next ones, the next slide. Color, color. Color, color. color, All color, are color, 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 color diagram. And also below that one of the spectroscopy method, one can identify individual star, but it's uh, time consuming. So we really rely on that. Then another things uh, from this picture, I just wanted to give you some uh, understanding that if you look at the different wavelength, say one region you are looking in the visible wavelength, another same region you are looking in correct wavelength. So appearance of the uh, visual appearance is a completely different. So that means uh, it has a, it's related to some of the emissions of the gas and dust from the medium. It actually tells of the physical system of the medium. So it's uh, probing the physical system of the medium to the observing in the different wavelength. So multi-wavelength messenger astronomy, that's why important here. Uh, so we have the different kind of massal facilities. You might have across two meter, um, uh, seen that two meter is sitting or 1.3 meter telescope and recently 3.6 meter they were sort of it. The optical telescope with ACR so far still to the largest telescope. So such kind of Indian facility we can use for uh, some spectroscopy or time domain astronomy. So we have used regularly. And plus, this is not all enough. So once you work on that, you have to rely on the lots of archival data all across that. So we have a all kinds of catalog. Start with the Gaia, IFAS, IH alpha emission catalog, and starts recently that uh, they have a 1.8 meter 
telescope as a close to the monakia not the monakia or any other harai leka harai leka na something i forget the name so pankstar actually whole sky survey they release the data and the lamost also recently coming in the big picture is the china that uh, spectroscopy archive facility cfst very old telescope kind of trans light hawaii telescope go it's the old but it, it has a very productive telescope because they always develop that instrument as well then you can you can actually there are several survey put up and they release lots of data in the near infrared wave one to 2.2 micron wave regions we have a catalog for that and two mass is all sky survey you know that is the one to 2.5 micron speed jar is a very important for the star formation studies because where you can get all the mid year data from 3.6 to 24 micron wave so this is the miss another um is is the next part that is the james wave okay so this is the miss then white white also a good telescope but it has uh, some problems with the regulation so there is a, that's why this feature is uh, much better in the if you have a speedjet data you should use rather than white data we can kill it but still we use that then iras is the old satellite but still, uh, still still we use that because it has a 100 micron 60 micron 25 micron data akari sometimes we use that uh, uh, data hard cell also means so we are still in the using the data but still we are working on that uh, full explore of this all these kinds of data lang so we sometimes use that and other radio telescope including our gmrt we use that so these are the kind of facilities once observational astronomy work you have to look at the all kinds of data example one student my student already submitted he recently submitted thesis ali he worked on the some star forming vision sh2242 he used that uh, understanding that classification of the stars using the national um, facility for uh acd we take the spectra also all kinds of objects uh, get together and get a science from it we get a sensors of this cloud first time uh, classified nicely all the uh, frequency can starts also understand the star forming region extinction uh, how the star formation they looks like that this is all about the study i am not going detail of that if you interested you look at the paper much more studies that they are some of the sorts i placed here another things uh, we got a interesting uh, things that's why i showing here sustaining star formation in the galactic cluster in 36 okay so this um, cluster is a very interesting for us so this cluster actually is about the 15 million year okay so it's a normal because uh, we can study earlier the cluster we studied is the 2 to 3 million year old they are much younger but is a relatively old generally we know that uh, in the cluster all the stars lose their disks after 10 million year so our solar system actually basically all the planet form before 10 million year okay all the jupiters and all the things they form during even uh, lesser than 10 million year so but uh, we expect that uh, this region should be dustless for the stars but interesting we find some packet here this is the packet that few young very young star eat about the um, some mentioned then they are point to point to is the very interesting we find that this is actually means uh, some kind of uh, we really didn't believe that region first so how come there will maybe background some regions is there program some region so several way we try to study study that then we understand that actually star formation process actually don't go all is together mostly together but if some sequence they also form some cloud 
they are matured still some crowd are still immature they are still forming so such is the evidence of these studies so it is the already published is a nice work and some international collaboration also they are in this work also in the audience the students working on that human interesting object is is 287 it has a huge clear okay obi association is taken for the project for here and extinct and is the two we have calculated uh, using the thk data you call this data extinction of the regions see that lots of clumpy regions in the inside the cloud and extinction is uh, very high with the five average extinction of this cloud so we are trying to understand actually still is the on ongoing study i just um, given some of the uh, from the speedjar data we have identified several that ysos similarly means wise data also several uh, yso we have identified and uh, through the spectra we are confirming some of the ysos so this is the means more results it will come up now another subject is the all these starts whatever means i was talking that is the female species that the mostly low mass stars mostly low mass stars they belongs to the class of the m dwarf m dwarf has a temperature typically around the 3000 kelvin where the sun is the 6000 kelvin so you expect they are emit maximum in the infrared wavelength because if you take the uh, wine's law lambda q max equal to 3000 uh, micron kelvin something so one micron regions their peak power so some of them are also they are very low mass stars these are brown dwarfs these are called we brown dwarfs brown dwarfs actually boundary between the uh, those stars don't able to fuse their with uh, hydrogen inside the core we are talk them as a brown drop but uh, they have a some kind of uh, mass limit 13 jupiter because they are crossing that exoplanets exoplanets they have a mass around that whatever we discover the kepler even it's a crossing brown drop boundary so it, this is the even some free space also we have discovered that uh, isolated planetary system it's a, around the 13 jupiter or 10 jupiter mass um is object also so we discovered the observation theory whatever tells is possible such kind of collapse is possible such kind of planet theory beyond that even they go much beyond that for uh, jupiter mass can collapse itself and from the uh, means uh, exo means whatever free floating planets can form it yeah deuterium actually basically uh, temperature i exactly remember don't remember but is the much less than that uh, hydrogen so i had a plot yeah there is a very hard some kind of nuclear yeah. very hard so working there yeah. that's why uh, yes it's a nuclear uh, uh, binding energy is the coulomb barrier that's, that's right, right. this lowering the coulomb barrier that's because of the nuclear yes <laughs> that i i cannot answer that <laughs> yes what i understand the burn is the much more than lesser than the uh, hydrogen yes So I had a car by I, I, but still now there is a model car is the Chevy at 2001 months the car nice car is there where that hydrogen is burning while lithium is burning while deuterium is burning with the EGS also is changing. So anyway that we think about the deuterium uh, can burn inside the BD, but you have to think about that yes. it's not completely observation fact some uh, some nuclear reaction also coming in the lithium burning and other uh, nuclear uh, burning is happens there that limits this because of that. 
but Bob Javis series you sometimes cross that uh, even some planets have more than that have in Jupiter. So this doesn't roll much observationally. But anyway, both both together, I agree with you. Observation some limit was there earlier when Kevlar was not there. We never have been such kind of planet. So after Kevlar, everything lots of changing happened. But theory, some basics are there. Why thirteen Jupiter mass? What is planet? What is brown rock? That is absolutely not there. That's why. That's why it's a very interesting area. If you study the brown rock, eventually you are studying the exoplanets. That is the region. So there is a no gap between them. So they are they basically their physics are same. No, brown rock, uh, they evolved like a planet. That's, uh, you can tell them planet. There is no point because I am telling you, brown rock actually burned goitorium. Goitorium, I guess, uh, you know, abundance about 10 to 2 minus 5. Okay. So they have a tiny amount compared to hydrogen, actually. They actually burn immediately in the younger ages. Within millennia time scale, this is done, finished. So now they see in the younger brown rocks actually thousand times more luminous than the whatever we see in the field. Okay, whatever brown rocks we are, we have a three thousand brown rock in the field. Also, we have located catalog, and also younger all the star forming regions uh, they have a more luminous brown rock. They are sometimes very exotic. They have a high magnetic field. They have a flare. They are competing with the all stars. <laughs> Okay, so in this slide, next slide, you see that. Yeah, even they can crossing sometimes uh, exotic manner, they are uh, solar flare, everything they are um, is competing with the uh, solar type stars. So, brown dot basically, once they burn, they slowly dim out with the time. So, whatever the field brown dots we see is the, the age about the three giga year. Okay. Sun is the five giga years, they are three, one, two, three giga years. So they are now planets, they are dim like things, they are faint, they are means so it's very difficult to catch them. That's why we have only collected 3,000 brown drop. Uh, but this uh, number is a huge, brilliance. Uh, they are sometimes talk as a dark matter, but it's not that. <laughs> so <laughs> we will sometimes find as a dark matter. So it's not that it's the observation limitation. So if the dimming of the brown dot is just simply due to the cooling, 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 like a cooling, cooling process. No source is there. Doitium finished. Doitium has abundance ten to the minus five. Okay, whatever the hydrogen is, um, that order is less. So, how much time they the million year time scale they goes on. But sun's billion year time scale still fusion reaction going on. Another five billion year years it will go on reaction. You can calculate. Simply you can calculate using that uh, how much um, it's a nuclear lifetime. Uh, using that uh, that photon photon chain you can calculate. Okay, so this is another area. This uh, kind of starts the exhibit variety of the photometric variability. And this is actually basically, remains you can start actually first discovered using such kind of variable. Okay, so 1945, Joe first detected remains you can starts. They have an unusual kind of variability. They term as a remains you can starts point later. But he starts um, the name as uh, some kind of uh, unusual type of variable. And this variability actually really happens. They have a spot and they are rotated very fast. Once you say so you have a spot, some signal is the coming and going. You have some kind of structure like variable, variability you can see. This spot size actually basically is a huge spot size. It is means, uh, in case of the sun, if you compare sunspot, sunspot we have seen in the through the telescope, there is a bl black god. Can you guess what is the size of such kind of spot? 
is the art size art size they can go up to art size so spot actually basically cover huge area uh, in this case no mustard the spot could be 30 percent of the total area so it has a huge impact on the variability in object and interestingly they have a magnetic field because these are all are low mustard is the purely convective starts they know have a radiative zone so magnetic activity also very strong in this kind of starts so we can see in this some kind of observation here some of the typically we generally even state premium sequence uh, variable on the cluster we even lots of kind of variability we have identified earlier and already all got things published. Students uh, already in postdoc somewhere. <laughs> so, so it's uh, now the things is that we are working on the in our students, basically two students actually strongly working on the test data. This is another area. So we are looking at that. What is the case actually? Transit ex exoplanet survey satellite. This is Basically, after Kepler, it was uh, this PI director, director of this project I met in, in, he came to India, David Latham. So, PRL, he came here for a conference, OBG Chakpur PRL, some conference, he came there. That time, case was their concept flight, 2012. So, it was old back, they were trying for. So, David Latham. Latham gave a talk there and told that uh, small aperture means, um, camera could be a more powerful product for any kind of science. Is that whatever you see that 105 mm aperture one telescope, they sent to means, wide, very wide, 24 by 24 degree field of view. Okay. And it has this four camera. So these are this observing is the 96 by degree by 24. When one steep of the art, they are observing in the whole night. And all the time they are taking data continuously and time switch data uh, taking. And their main goal is the is, uh, taking that. Uh, Taking the, the transit of the exoplanet such, but it has just some limitation. Most telescope is not Kepler. Kepler has a 1.4 meter diameter telescope. It has a very good spatial resolution. It has not that, but it has a tremendous uh, speed. It can work in the loss of exoplanet discovered. And also other science, it has done significantly very strong, particularly Loma stars in dwarfs. Okay, this is the way it's, uh, case is working on that. So one step of the objects we are uh, um, uh, giving observation also already it has co covered almost whole sky and different regions. It's uh, observed in the multiple times. It's a given that 27 days, 54 days, and also some circle it's repeating for the JWST, whatever is looking at some fields. Here are some of the immediate results, whatever we look at the, the case. We are looking some brown drop variability in the Tora star forming regions. And these are the all Indian facility, 1.3 meters devotional optical telescope data. We find lots of variability. Interestingly, we find one um, sphere in the data. This observation I have taken in the 2009 when I was in Eri one meter telescope. I never look at that angle is the there is a flare. <laughs> I never, I thought is the variable. When I give the data to my student Samrat, he identified there is a flare. Then I went to radio that time I told no no you just uh, noise you are picking up flare. So you be careful. No, no I am sure it's clear. Immediately, the taste detected several flares on the ground rock. So that is the means. Uh, look at the data. What way you look at the data? That is also means good eye should be here. Huh? So I have checked. 
I never means, uh, didn't care. My student cared. Flare. He detected flare. I have observed 2009 data. And it's uh, when we have published flare. So the, he also observed several times. He never get the flare. But in my observation, I got one. And immediately in this case, we verified. So no, it's one thing. It's a uh, case, uh, case with that time, say, uh, I think, what is the Rajiv, what is the span of the 27 days? 27 days. And so there will be two players there. Two, three players. Uh, two, two, two players there. So similarly, another things, uh, but here there is no case data was required. Is there really fair we observed in the, in the telescope observation in the another star forming region IC348? Also, lots of brown dots, they have a it's very fast loaded, hour scale they are loaded in. Okay, this is the another question actually means uh, such kind of rotation. Uh, Physical, physics understanding is uh, giving the lots of problems. It's uh, why such kind of hours be variability coming. Really, day scale is uh, accepted most of the cases, but hours scale variability is uh, another question people are trying to understand different physics behind that. And also here, Rajiv is here. He's also working. He's working. You can hand is working also huge on the test data. He also find is a very interesting a complex light curve. Is the dis great discovery of the case. Is a one of the discovery case first time detected such kind of complex light curve. They are means changing pure with the time. By complex light curve, you mean? Complex light curve you means it's a not a regular periodic. Is not a, a periodic. That is a true known fact. But here is the uh, sometimes it's a, all the time they are really purity, but is a pure changing. So this is a, some kind of complex phenomena. So if you have that, uh, yeah, all the brown dots, yeah, brown dots in um, so these are the M seven, M seven stars in the young star star forming regions. They are brown. Dots. Okay. So these are the actually basically means uh, complex phenomena and understanding still complex like curve is still challenging. Uh, still people believe that uh, some kind of accretion, variable accretion, one of the region and some kind of the inclination of the seed that uh, rotating the core ring, the some material around the stars, that is another phenomena. So such kind of uh, start for sports also and other things, differential rotation among the like a sun, you have equatorial rotation and pole is the differential rotation spot also. Here you have equatorial spot and polar spot. So such kind of combination uh, also work on uh, such kind of variability, but pinpointing there is no regions for that. And also Purity, purity, also brown drops is uh, discovered. Yeah, interestingly, all this, uh, some of the two observations, then the case data eventually gets all the fair activity. This is a very common in case of the uh, such kind of the brown drops here. They have a energy that typically can be about 36 hours. Even strongest flare in the sun is the 34. So the few order higher than the uh, uh, sun. sun. Solar flare, we sometimes see that massive solar flare happen. But it's a more 10,000 10, times more massive than the small brown drop is emitting such flare. Can you imagine that they had a such kind of uh, uh, flare can happen. It has a uh, magnetic field about the uh, 5 to 10 kilogauss range magnetic field it requires such kind of flare to launch. So they have a huge spot and magnetic uh, twisting of the lines reconnection happens in this medium. So that's why they are able to launch uh, strong flares. Why are you saying 10,000 more than solar flares? 
energy. So yes, uh, sun that strongest there is uh, having ten to the power thirty two degree. Oh, energy. Energy. So maximum is a um, can is a uh, below that. Strongest player so far observed is around uh, thirty two, thirty three. Okay, here the stars almost double in in one and a half hours. Yeah, that's right. Then the duration also matters here. What kind of duration you are working? So total energy released uh, that is. Uh, that's why high, very high. So uh, naturally, it means uh, that Rajiv has question that why we care clear, right? So establish the solar and stellar connection, and clear rates can deplete ozone layers. That's a very interesting ozone layer. It's if you have clear stars in the around the infrared, we are thinking about the rocky planet. JWST is looking for the M drop, particular aiming. Rocky planet is there, light can exist there. If you have a such kind of flare, there is a pose the problem on the such kind of light. Light cannot exist in that system. That is the point. Ozone layer. So, we yes. says, uh, yes. But the dual stars are much more active. It's much more active. They are, Yes, that. So they, they, they are means. Uh, yes. <laughs> so another things are uh, these also interesting one. This Edilio, the very known means well known object. For clearing stars to the M4. Once we look at that uh, test data, so the, we can see that uh, huge, there are lots of flare over the light curve. And also, this on topic that it has a variability about the 2.23 uh, days. Okay, so there is a flare, there is a nice rotation, so it's a uh, happening there. And also, this is the interesting to see that this flare could be linked with the, some activity indicator in the spectral lines, magnetic field. Can we diagnostic with the magnetic field with this flare to spectra something? On that line, Dia is working on that. Dia is here. So he has taken uh, many spectra on that uh, 3.6 meter transcript, new good instrument. So it has a cost dispersal spectra. You can take the one sort can six, take a spectra 0.6 micron to 2.5 micron. So we, we can see several activity indicator lines, H alpha, plus and uh, beta, then calcium all the lines, tablet, higher tablet. So these are basically, it has some correlation with the magnetic on the stars, these are lines. But still today, there is no good correlation. It's just how the magnetic field, because magnetic field determination on the star is the very limited. Okay. So there is no correlation. So we are working on that, how to fit the correlation with the spectral to magnetic field on the stars. If you have some kind of empirical relation, you can, some way you can guess that what kind of magnetic field have on the stars? Okay. Of course, uh, then uh, another student, Dimadri, uh, completed PhD, submitted PhD, not uh, Calcutta University. But problem is that <laughs> our student is all our students are interested to do register at President's University. <laughs> some some first batch is. Because uh, Rajiv, uh, Rajiv one day came to me, he got a letter from Calcutta University, he was submit my um, registration fee. Then he asked me, sir, one year it will be late, my PhD. Shall I go to presidency? Then I told, uh, see that your process, everything is gone, it will be prestigious, you cancel the registration from university. 
So please go ahead with that right now. We we'll see that next graph. Yes. So anyway, that is the so we have a so Dimadri already submitted. We always catching his head. I have to wait for the one year to get a certificate. They are looking for the outside. And he worked very really interestingly. He take that uh, crispet spectra from the Himalayan from the telescope and drops of M drops. He studied that. I think 60 M drops is observed. And, and of course, he used uh, several interferometry calibrated M drops for taking the calibration lesson. Okay. 16 uh, uh, interferometry, all the calibration, temperature, radius, all things determined accurately. Take the spectra, make a calibration relation. And it's what really nicely with the even crispate low reduction spectra. Let us you see shift to the Carmen's color also as high regulation. Some spectrograph archive data was there, and he established beautiful relation on the high resolution 90,000 uh, uh, spectral regulation and very accurately can you can determine that temperature radius and these are the very important parameter for the exoplanets uh, science because they need the host or characteristics so this is another way is the link to the exoplanets and other uh, missions for this calibration relation of course several people are working on that so it is the one piece of the work will be added so now again, I come back to the <laughs> JWST. Why? So all these signs I just told you, but still there is a still question is there. If you have a means, uh, lots of uh, exoplanets are there, lots of exotic medium is there. Life can sustain other systems. So. With, I believe personally, I believe personally, JWST has a lots of caliber in this region. Still, we have to wait for a few years. So now they are settling, slowly settling for that. So they have an instrument all kind. And hope we see some lights on this kind of the habitability and planet things. And of course, End of the day, we look for such kind of life to exist. At least we see Mars. Immediately, Mars, we have a lots of men's experiment, and immediately JWST gives some hints on the Mars. Mars as a life or not. So, this is the simulated spectra. Of course, with the JWST scientists, we have simulated on the Mars, taking in the world. Group. Parameter, what kind of detect on the molecules they can detect very clearly, and we hope so. And then, last Kepler did a fantastic job density versus radii. Consider that Earth density is the 5.5 gram per cc, Jupiter is the 1.3 gram per cc. And the Neptune is the 1.64 gram per cc. Look at the diagram here. Somewhere Earth is 2, 3, 4, 5. Somewhere Earth, zone. Okay, below is the Jupiter, I see planets, all the zones. We have lots of rocky planets on that region. We have been lots of, so there is a high hope that some life could exist in the other world. That's all. I'm finished. And of course, yes, sorry. I have to announce some things here. This is the your young generation. I should uh, advertise our new initiative. We are trying to actually basically that uh, first Eastern Region 1 telescope, modest size telescope, 1.5 meter telescope. And you see this India we have uh, all kinds of facility actually located uh, in this region. So there is a gap here. This gap, I cannot tell that we have uh, do strong science, we cannot tell. At least we can train our students to the bigger system. That's simple motivation. Small telescope, train the students, 
and some kind of useful data we have shown here. One meter telescope actually do lots of things. We can do lots of science with the other facilities. And this is the point of view we have already taken that we have to land in the Panchet. Proposal is submitted to BST. And this is the top of the land where we acquired the two hectare land. It's a long process, it goes that. Of course, I think uh, you're all the professors are involved in this project. Ritabon, Suchetana, uh, they joined some of our meeting. So you are the users committee because SMBOS is a small institute. We cannot we jointly work together and hopefully we can deliver some things. So this is the way we should go and hope to see some success sometime. Do you want to take something? No, that's fine. Fine. Yes. Hey, yes. Uh, yeah. So end of the day, here's the summary and conclusion. Understanding female you can start young star forming regions provides important clues on the solar system, planet formation, including their environment. Brevity study enables us to probe their atmosphere and stellar activity due to magnetic field reconnection evident from the flares like solar, but much bigger scale. Better clear images of the earlier stars and galaxies provide formation of our universe and origins that are looking for the data astronomy community. Investing is invest, investing exoplanet orbiting nearby stars to like a taste or whatever bit doing that to determine their temperature, surface temperature, map, atmospheric chemistry in the uh, continued search for planets capable of sustaining life. This is the dialogue of the AWS. This is not my dialogue. So this is the way I end. Thank you very much. So we'll have uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we'll have uh, so we'll have the floor now for questions. Yeah. Yeah. There is some correlation, empirical correlation are there. Using that value, uh, using that if you have a flare energy such such as much. So you put in uh, applying that value, there is a correlation, you can find that you can get the magnetic field. But directly in the principle, what you are asking that magnetic field is not possible to calculate. There is a correlation from the code, this much magnetic field can produce such pair. So that we are calculating. So, sir, uh, my question is in uh, which part of this sequence of the payment sequence to the young star formation uh, are those safety variables? Safety variables? Yes. Uh, where, where is the, what is the position in the line? Safety variable actually, basically, they are. Field star, basically, they are the high mass field star. So they are quite periodic variable. They could be located long distance. What can distance indicators use that? And they have a few things with a few days, as well as I cannot remember. Uh, with a few days, I think, oh, a day, but they are not female. They are not at all TV, so they are field stars. They are field stars. They are, they are galactic, they are included, they are made out of DNA. You know them. So, my question is You spoke about the variability studies and enable us to study their the, due to magnetic field and all. Can we say anything about the source or origin of the magnetic field from the variability study? Both of the magnetic. We charge. 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 We charge
harms cells of the disease start from this zone, the excess infrared. So, we may die, sir. We can argue with that. So, only just the excess infrared signal that that's only from the star formation, not any other cells. How can you confirm that? Yeah, that's right. In the inner corner, three groups in the inner star, they are really important and much different. What about the star formation is younger age in the star? They have the whole star, all the stars are visible. So that is the big signature is there. We don't expect any kind of excess in the normal star. But if they are in the space, we can expect the excess star. So that is a big talk. So uh, in, the, in the very beginning of your talk, you were explaining about the, you were just uh, talking about the transit method and the uh, at that time, you mentioned about the rocky exit lines. Yeah. So my question is, uh, like, so how how we can uh, say whether the exit line is rocky or gaseous, like just from the transit method, or do we need no microscopy? Uh, no, no. If you uh, simply that uh, rocky planet will tell uh, this this diagram actually, is it rocky or not? This diagram. Okay. How? Uh, can one can derive this diagram? We have to understand the mass and radius. If you calculate mass and radius, you get the density. So, this is the way in which. Uh, yeah. From the density, yeah. Density, you can get the rocky. We need the reference, the cross rocky reference. Only transit will work. Hello. Density, you have to know the density. density. What that you need to know? Mass and radius. Achha, we talk here, which I mean, to have a Acha, thank you. Thank you. I mean, ask. Wait for So, I have one follow up question. Yeah. Like, are you I think I have missed, missed something, so I'm just uh, on a uh, like, so, uh, you, uh, so, I was just wondering when we were, when the first set of ground work were detected, like what do we? Why we, when we are uh, detecting an object, why we are calling it like not just a bigger, higher, uh, massive planet or like what we see, like first, like after yeah. that, the variability studies for, for the atmospheres and layers, maybe it was the latter no. part. So, there is a planet, usually, we have a notion that planet could circulate as a host star. Okay. So, they are not actually. Isolated, they are not attached to any system. This is a normal star for the system for things. So that's why they are different from the planet. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions uh, from the audience? Yes, what is it? Sir, what is the uh, mechanism behind the short term strong variability in the ground works? And is there some kind of inverse relationship or and they say more massive stars have shorter variable, I mean, long scale shorter variability or something like that. No, the radius and the variable opposite. Yeah, we know that the why the star rotate is the rotation variability. Galaxy itself rotate with the some date, and all the ISM, where the star formation happening, they have the angular moment. Once star is formed, that angular moment is dumped in the system. Once you calculate that ray, it's a limited to radius. The big size is rotating very slowly. Once you dump it, so it rotates very fast. Okay. So, but if you calculate it, it will, it will be the max to see that whatever the rotation rate of the ISM is dumped to the ground drop, it will be the spinning very fast. But uh, there is a loss in this system because. There is a still that angular moment that moving in the system into a place and due to stellar wind, all these things lost it there, but still there is fast rotating with the hour system. Okay. So and also they have the spot as they go up, you can see the green. So this is the way. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Okay. 
So my question was that uh, what happens to the regression disk uh, while the formation of the premium sequence starts? Like, uh, what is that? What happens to the uh, disk, uh, the equation disk, while the start formation? Like, how does it lose up? Like, uh, uh, how do you, is there any precise calculation of the time limit by which it can yeah, goes? Yeah, time limit, if you have that uh, activation state, I think, so during the two years, the activation state There is no calculation. There is an empirical relation. You mean to do yeah, that? Yeah, this one. Yeah. So we have the energy. Energy. They are energy we are getting. Yeah. yeah. That is the only means of the, from the fair light curve you can get. Yes. How much energy is the relation? Then there is the empirical relation. From there you can get the. You can get the magnitude. What is the? We have picked that. some of that. Yeah. Different kind of. You have a known magnetic measurement measure start. We have a flare. So, what kind of flare magnetic field is there? So, the, there is a lots of uncertainty in there. Yeah, but still, some guess. Yeah, but design, they expect that there would be some theoretical model which is mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of how yeah, yeah, that is the, that is the, that is the most important part. Yeah, but here there is don't so much. Get in the um, theoretical model. I actually have a question related. Yes, please. So all this uh, this fair looks like it goes up very quickly and then decays slightly slowly. Very Is that the nature of all such flares in the inverse? All flares are like that, or yeah, all flares are like that. And also, it's a, just sometimes double peaks. Right, there are some multiple peaks. Multiple peaks. So the solar flares. Do they look the same? They also go up fast and because I am guessing that all these empirical relations they are related to our knowledge of solar flares because there we know that okay this much, kind of magnetic detail we know that much more details we yeah. know that so this is our benchmark. That's right. That is the benchmark. So there we know that okay this is the magnetic field this kind of magnetic connection or something is happening that's causing this extra energy. So they're just comparing that, but that may be just a zero edge level. Zero edge level. Even some stars, uh, we have a magnetic field measurement, like a CAPST expert on instrument. They measure the given spreading. Right. Yes, given yeah. spreading for the high resolution spectrograph. So they yeah. have uh, one group, they work on that strongly. They have a handful measurement of the magnetic field measurement. So from that, uh, those stars have a fair, so they have so some problem. Yeah, this is whatever no, your no, question no. is that. That is the right way to measure the demand spreading. If you see, this is the magnetic measure. I mean, all we know about solar magnetic field is from demand. Yeah. But for sun, it is much easier. 
Khan, he because uh, because of much more closure, yes. so he have a all kind of strong lines are there, and all the given spreading works on the atomic line. But, uh, so uh, you mentioned something in this line that, uh, and that's probably as this morning that most of the stars are M dwarfs and K. But on the other hand, they are the most sort of active. They have more players. So if we are looking at planets, yeah, uh, we are looking mostly around these M dwarfs and K stars. G but G they G are G affected G by yeah, sometimes sometimes stars sun radial stars. velocity measurement all are G type stars. Okay. And the ones came, they found lots of the planet around the low mass. Yeah, I mean that, that's because I mean Kepler is looking at one place. Yeah, on there will be more yes. in more Loma stars there. Yeah. But then finding planets around these M dwarfs may not be very good because then we are looking at planets which are often affected by these large stars and so on. So this understanding earlier it was not there. They are so they were thinking, scientists were thinking M dwarf uh, Life would exist around the M dwarf planets right. because so of the low temperature, right. 3000 Kelvin temperature. And they, can be and they, 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 they are closer to the uh, stars, right. so life could there potentially exist on that. But now is the thinking mm -hmm. that you know, they are exuding. But right. then another statistics is how many are there exuding. Okay. We may think about the observe so much uh, small numbers, we cannot predict that uh, statistics. Mm -hmm. So another thing is the statistics. Okay, so I think uh, let's thank the speaker and uh, thank you so much for yeah. also to the audience and all the interesting questions and discussions we have. We yeah. hope that uh, you know all coming weeks we have so much interaction. Next week we have a speaker who's going to talk about Indian music in the oh. wider vision. So they, I'll send you the abstract and titles too. Okay, so that will be fantastic. It's about music and astronomy. Okay. Music and astronomy. Oh, very good. Is it Oh, well, that is. Uh, yeah, I think that is. Yes. 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 The most of the music,